Hey, brothers and sisters, it's Terry. Um, it's Sunday, November 12th, um, 7 15, 7 16 in Atlanta. And um, I, I wanted to tell you a few things. Um, I'm still going, there are a couple things that keep, they're like in the background of my memory. One of them is Fairy having um, a dream of seeing a big banner with Noah on it and hearing Sukkot. She didn't know what Sukkot meant and she wasn't asking for a dream about the rapture and uh, so that always is in my background. Plus, um, it's seven, now it's 717, I just saw that. Plus, um, I still have this from October 13th. Hmm. Is it showing up? Is it focusing? There it is. A speed limit sign of 13 miles an hour with a man right beside that sign or in my line of sight wearing a shirt. Nope, not today. That was on October 13th as I was sitting next to a... Um, it's October 13th. I'm sitting next to a cemetery in Roswell, Georgia. Not Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell, Georgia. At a place called Thumbs Up Restaurant. On Highway 9, which is Atlanta Street. I see 13 miles an hour. I still, I've never seen one before. I've not seen one since. A 13 mile an hour speed limit sign. Yes, did I think that Jesus was coming back on October 13th. I did. I've had a lot of, I still, you know, I'm still looking at dates. Okay, so then we had, um, other interesting thing was my rock that God told me to write on, patient endurance. Patient endurance. Okay, so today I'm on my way to church. And, um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I can find it. Okay, so today I'm on my way to church. And the tag in front of me is RFF0122. I see 22. I'm like, hmm, I got to take a picture of that. If we come to a stop, I do. So, I haven't figured out what RFF means. Then I go to, and I'll, well, I'm just going to show, well, now I'll come back to that. Okay, so that's on the way to church. It turns out that when we get to church, um, they're having a healing service. I didn't know this. I'm still new at this church. I've not been in a church that's had a healing service on a Sunday morning. You know, last Sunday was, uh, I did a video about how there were a thousand kids that have participated in a Disciple Now weekend who were all excited and pumped up, you know, thinking they were brand new, well, not all of them, but there were a good many that thought they were brand new Christians. And um, the pastor did a sermon on counting the cost to follow Christ. Very big. So today we are, um, we are singing, uh, Two songs by Johnson Ferry Worship, Always Only Jesus. I've got a Johnson Ferry Worship playlist, uh, but you can also go to their YouTube channel, Johnson Ferry Worship. Um, they have a new CD out. The youth choir was singing with them. So they sang Always Only Jesus and the Cross Still Stands. And this group of kids, they're just so wonderful to look at, so full of joy and light and smiles and they are leaving I'm not sure exactly when they're leaving but they are going to Poland to sing uh, in Poland on a mission a choir mission trip with um, with singing the song the cross still stands it's a really powerful song uh, so you know I think it'd be a great thing to look at so anyway um, then I go to and I, believe it or not, I actually spent some more time in Stellarium. So I'm going to get to that because uh, I'm going to give you the, for me, the high watch, 
high watch times for this evening into tomorrow the 13th 13th okay um so um let's see so okay so we we have this healing service and before the healing service, they have a testimony. I thought it was a baptism testimony, but it was just a healing testimony. And yes, I was crying. A lot of people were crying. Um, the testimony was a, of a... I'm hoping I won't cry now. The testimony was of a man who um, thought he was a believer and thought he was standing strong and all of that. And then he ended up just going off the deep end. He became an alcoholic. He cheated on his wife. Um, when she found out about it, they got a divorce. You know, really, I can't give you too much of his testimony because I was crying. Uh, it, it always gets me to see um, these kinds of testimonies, right? Because that's the story of my life. But in this case, God did do a miracle. And... Um, he ended up, it, what happened was, uh, he broke down and was crying out to God, like, what has happened? I have totally destroyed my life with my decisions. Um, and um, it turned out, oh goodness, it turned out that as he was repenting, his wife that, they were divorced now, and this is, I believe it was, I'm not exactly sure how long it took, but they had been divorced for a while. He finally hit rock bottom and was repenting, and it turned out that his wife was in um, divorce care, and she ended up calling him the next day. She hadn't had any contact with him. This was God. She called him the next day and asked him if he would meet with her to listen to uh, a video from Divorce Care on Reconciliation. Not, I did Divorce Care um, several years ago, so I don't remember exactly which, um, but it's near the end of, uh, Divorce Care is 13 weeks, so it's near the end of that. So it ended up that they, God granted them reconciliation and in his testimony, they um, were called the miracle couple. And they're, they, and I mean, I was just crying a lot at this point. I just remember seeing the pictures. I'm not sure how much I was hearing, but it was basically, you know, God had done a miracle of reconciling them and bringing their, uh, I, I believe in their picture, it was two sons. And, um, sorry. Pictures from their remarriage. And it was just beautiful. It was really beautiful. And it was all God. And so God brought healing and rec uh, reconciliation because this man was given the opportunity to repent. And he did repent. So that's beautiful. That isn't what a lot, you know, God is so gracious to give people the opportunities to repent over and over again. And, uh, and they don't. Or if they repent, it's a, um, it's a, it's a false repentance. Because godly sorrow produces genuine repentance, which has the deeds of repentance. And in this case, his godly sorrow produced true repentance to where he was committed to reconciling. And it ended up after they had watched this video together, um, they dated. They started dating again, and he felt they fell in love with each other again. So, huh, beautiful. Um, so I was. So then they, um, we had a message on, um, on healing, talking about the woman who um, touched Jesus's garment. Um, to be cleansed of the issue of blood. It was a very good sermon. Um, and talking about how that woman had been despised and rejected 
uh, because of the issue of blood that made her unclean and that when she touched Jesus she realized that when he turned around to say you know who touched me she realized that by her touching him that she had made him unclean but Jesus didn't care Jesus didn't care about being around the unclean Jesus healed her and she'd had an issue of blood for 12 years okay Terry stop crying you need to get through this um, okay so it was beautiful all beautiful then they had a time of prayer they brought up healing ministers I think about six of them and people could get in line and be have uh, have hands laid on them I, I didn't see anybody get anointed with oil but they could have been anointed with oil um, there was a line they were they were praying I have to say it's the first time that I've ever um, well I'm not gonna go there that'll get people all off track okay so um, near the end I went and prayed prayed for myself I asked for a prayer for my own reconciliation in my family um, so I pray that people who the, the prayers were for people to be healed of physical illness and I know a lot of y'all are in a lot, lot of physical pain emotional pain um, relationship pain all of these pains of this world so it was just beautiful and I was just so impressed that a church actually would do this you know I mean I've heard of of prayer services you know that happen on Sunday night or Wednesday night or whatever small attended things but this was a bold step for a church to do this okay so we go to that and after we're out it turns out there's a woman named Pat who um, I met I met a few weeks ago about a month and a half ago I was out in the parking lot and I was like hey I've run into you several times I see you so I believe we're supposed to talk because that's the way God gets my attention and she's she has my same life story um, with um, the adulterous husband and um, and if I'm still around probably you know if I'm still around after the 13th <laughs> I'll probably do a, a testimony of I heard her testimony a second time of something that uh, some really cool things and um, you know if we or if we're still here I'll probably start talking about some of her things but it was still pretty cool that there were three evangelists all together. She has the gift of evangelism. Barry has the gift of evangelism. And I have the gift of evangelism. It's it's an uncommon gift. And then it's even more uncommon in women. And here are the three of us out of, I don't know how many thousands go to this church, but the three of us are sitting on the couch for an hour after church is over. It was just, it was really beautiful. So, Barry and I, it turns out her husband lets her go um, out to lunch which is really pretty amazing because he is uh, anyway we won't talk about him <laughs> so we get to the restaurant and I was like let's go to let's go to Chili's I have a gift card for that so as soon as I get in the car you know she and I are in separate cars as soon as I get in the car now I had listened to to worship music I was actually listening to uh, what's on my pump up playlist not my pump up playlist on YouTube my pump up playlist on Amazon music no commercials um, my pump up playlist I was listening so I had listened to I don't know 15 songs then I heard the songs that were sung at church um, after the prayer service they sang another couple of songs um, but when I get in the car I have a song that's in my background that is not one of the ones that I'd heard this morning um, it's the lion and the lamb and the um, the part where it uh, says, Who will stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring, the dun, fighting our battles. Who will stop the Lord Almighty? That's not the, the part that I first heard when I got in the thing was, in the car was, um, He's coming on the clouds. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. 
Who will stop the Lord Almighty? Okay, that's what I had going. So I was like, that is so cool, God, you gave me that song. As soon as I got in the car, I'm driving over to meet Fairy at the Chili's, and I, <laughs> she gets the parking space directly in front of the front door. There's another car, and then there's a space for me. So I'm two off from the center of the front door. She's in the very front door. I've got my dog in the car because I didn't feel like leaving her at home all day, and it's cool now outside, so she can stay in the car and not have people writing notes. You're you're leaving your dog in danger, even though I've had somebody do that when my, when it's 50 degrees outside, and they're saying I'm cooking my my dog. But anyway, she's much happier being in the car, sitting there waiting on me than just sitting at home. So I parked the car. I'm like, Barry, Barry, come, come look, come look. And she's like, what? And I said, look. Okay, so beside the car that's in between us, CFC, I said, Christians for Christ, 7722. The car, no, I think that's the car to the left. The car that's between us is... PKA 8088. Pra Praise King's Arrival. 888 is Jesus. Okay, this is where. It, then it turns out that the restaurant's address is 4111. 4111. I see 111's a lot. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 4 is. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and me, or you, or the bride. Okay, now this, <laughs> yeah, this is hard. Then I look to the right. What does that say? 4-2 beast? 4-2 beast? Okay, then we, <laughs> then we walk in the, we walk into the restaurant. I was like, Barry, listen. To the song I looked it up I looked it up the song was take the long way home take the long way home okay I was like Barry take the long way home we are so ready to go home we're so ready to go home look at God is talking God is speaking so I just looked up super it's super tramp take the long way home losing your sanity long way out Nights become a catastrophe. What you could have been, what you might have been, take the long way home. Okay. <laughs> We're sitting there. It turns out that the server is, she's clearly a believer. She didn't, she had this big smile on her face. Just very, I'm like, look at her light. Her light shines. It just does. And uh, at the moment, I can't remember her name. And then I was like, look, this was right to our left. Can y'all see that? Yeah, Providence Square, no place else. And then it has a USA balloon from the Veterans Day. Providence Square, no, like no place else. I started to, uh, to, to look up Bible verses on Providence, but I didn't get it. Anyway, we, we had a great time talking, and then when I got up to go to the restaurant, restroom, <laughs> the song was um, Jet Airliner by Steve Miller, which is 1977. I was working for The Limited back then, and just a little side story, little side story. You know how all this, all this um, people getting upset? Christians being attacked uh, about a possible thing that happened 40 years ago, 38 years ago. Well, those were different times. And I was working at the Limited. I was 16, 17 years old. I, I believe I was 16. And a movie star came into the store, a male movie star who was considerably older than I was. I haven't looked up to see what, I mean, I know his name. I'm not really going to put it out there. Uh, considerably older, considerably older, but I knew he was famous, right? His dad is famous. His brother is famous. He was famous. And he wanted, he asked me out on a date. Now, I said, I was like, uh, I think I need to ask my parents. 
But the interesting thing was he was very interested in making sure that I was of age, that I was 16 and not 15. And that's Lexi drinking water. Now she's gonna eat some food. He was very interested in making sure that I was 16. But I was like, and I remember talking to him, I'm like he's really flirting with me. And I remember talking to him and saying, you know, he's like, oh no, my wife and I are separated and all of this stuff. But he really wanted to go on a date and I said, you know, I need to ask my parents. And fortunately, my parents were like, no, he's up to no good. You know, why would anybody be like that? I mean, I had a little bit of, I had a little bit of discernment. But um, anyway, so, and, you know, I, I didn't go out on a date with him. Who knows what might have happened. I, I have a lot of other stuff that happened to me that was, uh, violations but it wasn't with this movie star anyway the point was that uh i it immediately took me back to 1976 77 when i worked at the limited um because this was a song that we played over and over we played fleetwood mac over and over we played steve miller i gotta fly like an eagle do this do this fly like an eagle let your spirit carry me Oh my goodness, I might need to look up those songs, those lyrics too. But anyway, in this song, um, Jet Airliner, um, I've been down before thinking about my home. Uh, take the, I forgot, on the take, take the long way home, home. There's a little theme about the home thing, right? Um, feel like it's all been done. I've got to be moving on. Goodbye to friends at home. Goodbye to those I've trusted. Go. This is where I, it's like, this was exactly when I uh, noticed the song. I was like, oh, I heard the lyrics and then I noticed the song. It was, we've got to go through hell before you get to heaven. You gotta go through hell before you, and I'm not singing it right, before you get to heaven. And then, um, also, I've got to keep on keeping on. Well, the last thing that I had said to Pat the Evangelist when we said goodbye was keep on keeping on in case we don't get raptured, keep on keeping on. And then that was in the song lyrics too. So um, I thought that was really interesting. So let's get to what I found out on Stellarium. Um, okay. So I found this out on Stellarium, and I just put it into Atlanta time. So I did a, I did a whole bunch of work, whole bunch of work there, right there. So maybe you can see it and read it. On November thirteenth at fifteen forty eight, that would be Israel time, Jerusalem. The Jupiter-Venus conjunction sets at 1548. Of course, this is in 24-hour clock. It sets in Jerusalem. So it rises, this conjunction, which on the 13th is the closest of the conjunction. If you go and look in Stellarium, the 14th, they've started to separate. The, the 12th, they're together, but not as close as they possibly could be. And on the 11th, they are not... Um, they're close, but they're not joined, I would say. So, so the first peak of looking at the rising of this conjunction is at 5.02. So I put that means for Eastern Standard Time, 5.02 p.m. That's tonight. That's in a few hours. The rise, this conjunction of of Venus, Venus, the bright morning star, Revelation 22, I am the bright morning star, with Jupiter, if that's the body of Christ, that, you know, this whole retrograde, the whole set, the whole September 23rd sign has been around Jupiter, that we are the, the body of Christ. And actually, you know, we, we call ourselves the bride of Christ, but I believe that there are very few scriptures that actually 
talk to us about being the bride. I think that there are many, many more scriptures that talk about us being the body of Christ. But I, I have not done the work on that. That's just what I've heard. Okay, so then we move from that it starts out, it rises at, I'm just going to talk about Atlanta time now, okay? But I did the work based on Jerusalem. I don't know. I'm, I might go back and forth. I'll read my notes. How about that? I'll read my notes. Maybe that would make it clearer than Terry just trying to run on. Okay, so the Jupiter Venus rises at 5.02 a.m. Then it peaks up. It looks like to me that when Venus is the closest to Jupiter uh, and it's on top of Jupiter, like a head on top of the body, the closest is at 13 o'clock on the 13th. So it would be 11, 13, 13. Um, and then, so it, it comes up at 5.02. It, it appears that the, clo the uh, closest that it's together is at 13 o'clock. Then, um, and actually also did a study of when does it look like the conjunction is directly over the southernmost part of the sky. So like, you know, in Solarium you have a little S for south. And when I tried to look at a straight line of it being directly over the S, it appears to be at 1031. Remember, now remember, I, I don't know, you probably don't remember. I saw a truck with, with T minus 726 Harpazzo. And right in front of it was a truck with 1031. So that was when I thought, oh, it's Halloween. But maybe it's the time. Y'all, all I'm doing is throwing this stuff out. If I'm, if we're still here in a, in a week, a month, I've got a few other things that I noticed when I was in Stellarium today that go into January. Okay, but the thing that I noticed that was really interesting was when it's directly over the southernmost sky at 1031 uh, a.m. in Jerusalem, it is in alignment with Regulus, the moon, Mars, Venus and Jupiter, the Sun, and Mercury. And it has Saturn in the right knee or the thigh of this man that holds the serpent. I don't remember that much about him. I know that someone did it. Plus, someone also said that could Mars be the dragon? And Mars is right at uh, Virgo's side. So, it was interesting. Like I put a piece of paper up. Look at that line. That line of Regulus, the Moon, the Mars, the Venus, Jupiter, the Sun, and the Mercury. Um, okay, so then, so it goes up, and of course it comes down to set. The setting time of, um, of the Jupiter-Venus conjunction is at 1548 or 50. So on on November 13th at 1548 to 50 is when this conjunction sets. Then if you go to the next day on the 14th, they're not that they're already coming apart. They're they're not as connected. So you put that into Atlanta time. That means tonight at 1002 on 1112 is the, which I believe is Sukkot, uh, 11, there's somewhere in there 1111 to 1113 is Sukkot, in my opinion. Um, then we have a, that rises at 1002 p.m. tonight. Then at 331 to 333 a.m. is where it hits the peak. So that would be 11.13, Atlanta, I'm talking Atlanta time now, 11.13, 3.31 to 3.33. Then it sets at 8.48 to 8.50 Atlanta time. That's what happens on November 12th through the 13th in the skies. If that's not the rapture. <laughs> I noticed, I started, started going fast forward through the different days. 
uh, to see what happens then. What happens after this with this Venus-Jupiter con con conjunction? Um, it turns out also that on November 17th, 11-17, the moon is right above Venus. So there's a moon-Venus conjunction. Then it turns out that there is a uh, Venus-Sun conjunction on January 7th. There's a Jupiter-Mars conjunction right at the top of Libra. It's like right in line with the scales, at least for this... Uh, you know, I didn't look at the clouds, uh, the, excuse me, at the star constellations. I was looking at the signs of the constellations, you know, where you click on uh, show the, the constellation art is what it's called. And right at the very top of Libra at the scales, there is a Jupiter-Mars conjunction on January 5th through 7th of 2018. So the Venus-Sun conjunction, conjunction and the Jupiter-Mars conjunction are happening at the same time. We've got another three-day window of January 5th through the 7th. But we also have this January, uh, November 17th. The moon is right above Venus. Um, you know, and the, if this Mars is the dragon, is that not interesting that the Jupiter-Mars conjunction at Libra, um, which is the, oh, uh, what is it? Libra is the um, holy altar. Holy altar is another name for it. So, there's a lot of stuff going on. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to tell y'all. Nope, that's what I want to tell you. So, I know that a lot of us are weary and a lot of us are still wanting to uh, be raptured. And I really hope that that's the case. I, I, I'll probably be able to go to sleep. It's not like, God's not like, oh, that was the other thing. I come home and, yeah, that was what I needed to tell you. There were, I didn't write this down, but this was something I needed to tell you. I come home and what? There's been an earthquake at the Iran-Iraq border. Um, and so I saw a girl's video that I have not seen her before, and I'll put a link into it. Um, and I know it is finished, has had, um, I have not had any earthquake dreams. I'm glad I haven't. My dreams have been uh, flying and rapture and flying and bride. Um, so those are all good things. I've had one tribulation dream, which was a um, nuclear Thing, but it was like very slow, excuse me, very slowly, slowly happening. Uh, so nothing scary. I haven't had any scary dreams. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. I don't need them. But anyway, she was talking about um, the 11-11 uh, the through 11-13 earthquake warnings from different people. It's a very interesting um, video where she compiled different people's um, messages that they've had about an earthquake. And I know Todd, it, it is finished. Uh, he watches me, I watch him, and uh, she includes his, um, his earthquake warnings. But here we've had an earthquake. Could there be... And actually, I think his earthquake thing said something about water being moved away. And when I looked at the center of the earthquake, um, it looks like to me it's right on a river. So maybe there's maybe there's more to come out about that. I don't know. Um, did I think that we were going to be gone by the time these people will be screaming helplessly at the sky? I did. I thought that would be an excellent time for us to be leaving. And I don't know if y'all have seen these people. They're screaming helplessly at the sky. What times we live in. Anyway, um, he's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Yep, who can stop the Lord Almighty? He's got his time. We are. We eventually are going to be with them, and he knows how much we want to be. And then we will have, it'll be like no place else in the Providence Square. It'll be like no place else. I love you. Bye.